Hey, let's try another one together. So I want to solve for x, but now I have rational expressions in my equation. Let's take, check it out. So here's a real complicated looking uh, equation I want to solve. I look at this, I see the denominators with x's in it, not happy, but I'm just going to multiply through by some quantity in order to make the denominators cancel. Well, actually, I see we have the exact same denominator on both sides, so if I multiply both sides through by the quantity x plus 4, I'm going to see, in fact, that I can simplify both sides and actually have a denominator of just 1. So let's check it out together. So I start off by taking the 7x over x plus 4, which equals 6x plus 5 over x plus 4. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides, both sides, by the x plus 4. And now we see there's simplification here and simplification here. Technically, by the way, I should really put parentheses here. And so what I'm left with is 7x equals 6x plus 5. This we can solve in our heads. Let's just do it in our heads first. Let's subtract 6x from both sides. So 7x minus 6x is just x, so I see x equals 5. It's sort of fun to do it in your head and then write it down to make sure that we got it right. x equals 5. Need to check our answer to make sure this is really OK. So let's take a little quick check. Put a 5 in here. So 7 times 5, that's 35 divided by uh, 5 plus uh, 4 is 9. And the question is, does that equal this side? Put a 5 in for uh, x, that's going to be 6 times 5, which is 30, plus 5 is 35, divided by a 5 plus 4, which is still 9. Yep, it sure checks. So we've got one answer, and the answer is x equals 5. Cool. Let's try one more together, because they are kind of fun, and it's sort of neat to see all these things in action. Now, here you'll notice that when I see the denominators in the equation, uh, there are different types. There's uh, x minus 1, but there's also a 3. If you want to sort of clear all the denominators, you can multiply by the least common multiple, which in this case will be 3 times the quantity x minus 1. So I'm going to multiply this by 3 times the quantity x minus 1, and this by the quantity 3 times x minus 1. Now what's going to happen? Well, when we actually write that out, what we see here is so I've got the left hand side and then I have the right hand side. Okay, now, notice that here, we've got to be really careful, this entire quantity has to multiply the first term and the second term. Now let's think about this. When we multiply the first term, notice that the x minus 1 in the numerator and denominator can be simplified. So I'm just left with 3 times all of that. So that 3 has got to be distributed through to all of that, and so I'm going to see a 6x minus 3. So these cancel. And then I distribute the 3, and I see 6x minus 3. OK, now I've got to take this quantity and distribute it to here. Notice now the 3's actually simplify, but I'm still left with the x minus 1, which has to be multiplied by the x. So now I have to distribute the x across here, and I'll see x squared minus x. OK, and then what happens here? Well, here I see a, a cancellation, a little simplification. And I'm just left with 3. And so when I clean this up, let's see what I see. I see the x squared. I like to write that first. Then I see 6x minus x. That's plus 5x. And then I have a, a minus 3 equals 3. But really, I see quadratic. I want the quadratic to equal 0. This is so important. Great opportunity to make a mistake. You have a quadratic and it equals 3, and you try to factor that. You can only factor 
if you have the thing equal to zero, because then if you can factor it up, you know that either one factor is zero or the other factor is zero. So we've got to get zero. So let's subtract three from both sides right here. If I subtract three from both sides to make that a zero, then I have a negative three minus three is negative six. And now that equals zero. Okay, now can that be factored? Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. Let's see, x, x, they're going to have differing signs since that's negative. Uh, the product has to be 6, and I have to combine them to get 5. So I am thinking 6 and 1. Product, and then perfect. So what are the solutions? Either this equals 0, which means x equals negative 6, or this equals 0, x equals 1. So we have two candidates, and now we want to see if they're correct. How do we see? Well, we have to do a check. So let's do a little check. All right, let's try the negative 6. I put a negative 6 in for x everywhere. So I see 2 times negative 6. That's going to be negative 12 minus 1 is negative 13. Negative 13 divided by, and here I have negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7. Okay plus negative 6 over 3. OK, it looks sort of complicated, doesn't it? So let's see. Does that equal, does that equal, um, does that equal this side? So this side is 1 over uh, negative 7. So the question is, are these equal? All right, well, let's see. Well, let's see. A negative 6 divided by 3 is just negative 2. So this is just a fancy way of saying negative 2, which I could really write as uh, 14 over 7. And this is actually uh, 13 over 7, because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So here I have 13 sevenths, and I subtract 14 sevenths. That leaves me with um, negative 1 seventh, which notice does, in fact, equal negative one-seventh on the right. So this checks. Great. So this is a solution. Whee! Happy, happy, happy. OK. And now let's just check the, the x equals 1. So x equals 1. On the numerator here, I put in a 1. I see 2 minus 1 is 1. That looks good. Divided by 1 minus 1 is 0. Whoa, whoa. 0? I, I can't divide by 0. That's, that's illegal. This is completely nonsensical. So by plugging in uh, a 1 in here, I see that it makes the denominator 0. That's not good. We're done. We know that this can't be a solution. This actually is an example of an extraneous root, in fact. Where did that come from? It came from the fact that when we tried to um, get rid of the denominator by multiplying through, we accidentally introduced a solution that actually is not a solution to the original to the original equation. Lesson, when you're checking your answers, don't check back to this kind of thing. You've got to check all the way back to the original question, the original equation. Otherwise, you might have actually found something is a root when it really isn't. This is not a solution. This is a solution, and this is not. So forget about this, focus on this, and we're all set to go.